Hey guys, welcome, welcome back, back to Willow Ridge Acres, Acres. Coming, coming to you with a spontaneous pop-up live stream here. Uh, puppy li live stream, Millie had her puppies last night. So uh, Jeff here, and I've got my daughter, Melissa, uh, here with us as well. And she's actually the puppy expert. She's the one that, um, you know, she, she wants to be a vet when she gets older. So uh, she loves doing all this stuff and she actually stays out with the puppies the majority of the day and night. So uh, as you're jumping on the, the live stream, let us know in the comments where you're watching from. We love to give people shout outs. And uh, this is kind of just a, a spontaneous live stream. I didn't sure how many people are going to jump on tonight. By the way, happy Easter. Um, I hope you had time to enjoy it with your family today. Um, but yeah, we uh, merely had our puppies just late last night. Uh, and, and we told everybody, everybody, you know, we would try to do one, you know, pretty soon after they were born. So here we are. Um, you know, we didn't give you much. Oh, it sounds like our sound is echoing. Hold on a second here. Let's see what I can do. All right, I changed something. Let me know if the sound is still echoing. Hopefully it's not. <laughs> We're literally right in the same area as uh, we're like right next to the welping box. So it might be just echoing. It's still echoing. We might have to change it up a little bit. Um, hold on. Or probably just like turn down this. Hold on. All right, we're back. Hopefully it's not echoing now. If it is still echoing, let us know in the comments. Uh, we're trying something different out with this live stream. So hopefully it's not still echoing, but we'll see here. Uh, so we got Terry joining on. She said, oh, yeah, <laughs> the puppies are super cute. We'll show you a couple of them close up to the camera in just a little bit here. Uh, Marsha joining from Atlanta. Hi. Hey, Marsha, happy Easter. Tracy said, happy Easter from Illinois. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. We'll give you guys some details on the puppies in just a minute here. Terry said, beautiful pups, guys. Perfect for the day of new life, right? Yeah, they were born just late last night. Uh, so we've got to enjoy them, um, you know, for Easter day today. And Millie's kind of worn out from giving birth to all of them. Mm -hmm. But uh, Mama and the puppies are doing great. They're all uh, very healthy and, and happy. Terry said she's watching from Southwest Michigan. Thank you for, for joining. Thank you for watching. Susan says, they are so cute. How many did she have? That's better. Yeah, sorry if it was echoing at the beginning. Uh, so usually when the last few live streams we've been doing, uh, me and Michelle, uh, my wife, we sit inside our house and kind of broadcast from my my laptop and then melissa and some of the other kids will have mm -hmm. our phones as separate cameras out with the animals well we're actually just out in the garage uh where we've got it you know air conditioning and stuff for our whelping boxes and we're literally sitting i mean i can actually turn it around you can see uh right across from where millie is and that white brick wall you see behind us is just a backdrop but <laughs> I hated the way it looks in the garage. Um, it just kind of looks junky. I, you know, we, we clean out our garage pretty often, but there's still just a lot of stuff in a farm garage. Uh, so I hated the way it looks. So we just threw a fake uh, white brick wall backdrop up to clean it up a little bit. But that's why it was echoing a little bit is because we're sitting so close to the other camera. So hopefully it's sounding better. Oh, yes, <laughs> Susan, we didn't even answer your question. How many did she have? So she had seven total and she had one boy to begin with. And then she had a whole bunch of girls. So we thought it was yeah. just going to be a lot of girls. She had one boy three girls, and then three, three girls in a row. And then three boys. In a row. And then three boys in a row. <laughs> so she ended up having four boys and three girls. And they were all uh, pretty big. 
pretty big. You know, not, not any of them were really small. Mm -hmm. So uh, very ha happy and healthy puppies. They're all nursing very well. Um, David said, that sounds good. Thanks. Thanks for giving us the feedback there. Michelle, my wife, said Jackson and I are watching. Awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm glad Jackson can watch and see the puppies. Yes, yes. Austin said, happy Easter. Whoa, I clicked on something wrong there. <laughs> Let's see. Terry said, uh, he has risen indeed. That's right. Amen. Amen. Well, hey, uh, post any comments you have or any questions in the comments. Uh, we'd love to, you know, let you know what's going on with the puppies and stuff. But, but yeah, what what time did uh, she start having? What, what time was the first puppy born yesterday? Um, six forty three p.m. So yeah, six forty three p.m. She had her first puppy. She was laboring pretty much all day, and then uh, she she had the seven puppies, and the last one was born at nine fifty four p.m. So not too not too long of um, you know active birthing uh for all seven and it went really smooth susan asked were you there watching yes uh both me and melissa were out here melissa stayed out here for the entire time uh you know we have other kids as well um so i was kind of in and out of the garage uh checking in i was out here for probably the majority of them mm -hmm. yeah uh but melissa was out here for every single one of them uh, with her medical gloves on and uh, all kinds of different supplies and stuff to make sure everything was good to go. Let's see. Uh, Kathy asks, how much are the females going to cost? So, Kathy, we've got all the information uh, on our website. If you want to look that up, uh, willowridgeacres.com. Um, so these ones, I'll, I'll let you know. Um, all of our puppies go to new homes uh, from our waiting list and uh, just from our website and from our, our YouTube channel, we have pretty high demand for our puppies. Uh, we already have about almost 50 people on our waiting list right now. So I don't want to discourage anybody from you know joining the waiting list, but uh, we've got seven puppies from this litter and we're expecting one more litter from another one of our uh, mamas, May. Uh, she is due this coming week, but obviously at 50 people on the waiting list, if you were to join, I, I can't really guarantee you a puppy from this year's litters, uh, just the way that, you know, things work out. They don't have that many puppies. Um, but, um, if you want to join the waiting list, you're more than welcome to you on the website. We've got all the details is in, including how much, you know, each of them costs and, um, you know, all our, our policies and, and everything that we do um, is on the website, willowridgeacres.com. You can go ahead and uh, check those out there. Susan said, your daughter is so grown up. <laughs> she is. She actually just started her first job uh, recently. She's working at the local car wash here. Mm -hmm. So uh, she's getting a little bit more tan from being out in the <laughs> sun, washing cars and stuff. But uh, it's a good experience and she's saving up to buy her first car mm -hmm. for when she turns 16 so yes terry asked how long before naming them you want to answer that question so um we don't really name the puppies ourselves because then we might get too attached to them or we will get too attached to them um, how do you know that we would because uh we named our first litter and we kept meredith so <laughs> yes yeah, we, we've just found that um, if we give them names, and sometimes it happens, we just end up giving a puppy or two nicknames just based off of, you know, personality traits that they have. But we try our best not to name them. Um, the way that we identify them, you want to go and just show a couple of them to the camera. Uh, the way that we keep them identified um, is by, you know, different colored collars. And we keep a record of that. Uh, as they're born, as soon as they're born, there's a few different things. We actually made this like little checklist. Um, it, it shows up backwards on the camera, but uh, it's like a whelping records checklist. You can find this. We have like an Etsy page as well um, where we sell this. It's pretty cheap, this little template that we made. But we record um, in order the, the time of birth, the weight, their gender, uh, some notes on them and also um, what color collar we, we assign to that puppy. So then really, 
the name that we call them is just Millie's Blue Pup or Millie's Pink Girl or Millie's Red Girl. Um, that way we don't get too attached to them. And then what we do is uh, once we call down the waiting list, and we'll, we'll start doing that. By the way, if you're watching and you're on our waiting list and you're wondering when you might get a call, obviously it depends on where you are on the list. We'll start calling down that list uh, in, in about two weeks here. We don't call right away. We want to make sure all the puppies are, you know, are good to go. And then we, uh, in about a week or two, we'll start calling down the list. And uh, if you get a call, we're just calling to uh, confirm that you're still wanting a puppy. And at that point, we would be looking for a deposit. And if you put the deposit down on your puppy, um, you still don't have, uh, you, you haven't selected your puppy yet, but we have one reserved for you, if that makes sense. So like if you wanted a boy and you put a deposit down, we got to you on the, the waiting list. We know for sure we have a boy puppy available for you. And then at about six to seven weeks, we uh, do selections because at that point, the puppy starts showing their personalities more. Honestly, they're all kind of the same right now at a newborn age. So it wouldn't really be um, beneficial to do selections already. But then uh, once puppies have been selected and we know which home each one's going to go to, we allow, you know, we ask that new, you know, forever family if they have a name picked out. And if they give us a name, uh, we'll start calling the puppy by that name. And then that way we have a name to call it for the next, you know, a week to four weeks that we have the puppy with us and you know that kind of helps us uh identify that puppy as well but because it's a name that the new family gave that puppy it kind of detaches it from us it's like we know that that's not ours to keep it's somebody else's they've already put a deposit on it and we're just being good stewards and and raising that puppy well and giving it a great head start before we send it home so Sorry, long story short, uh, we don't name them ourselves. They just go by a col uh, color of the collar. And we just get um, whelping collars off of Amazon. You can find those on our website as well. Terry said, Eros is throwing his light up ball all over the kitchen in celebration of the puppies. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I'm going to zoom in real quick on Millie's puppies here. I love how I love when they're like some of them just like lay up by like her face and they like just kind of mm -hmm. snuggle today. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So you want to tell them like what the different uh, color color ones we picked out this time? Sure. So we have our firstborn was blue. Our second is pink. Our third is red. Our fourth is purple. Our fifth is green, our sixth is black, and our seventh is orange. Yeah, and then I, I keep a spreadsheet with all that information. And then as I start, you know, calling down the waiting list and uh, getting deposits, I, you know, know who has paid a deposit. And then when we do selections, I plug in all that information onto the spreadsheet. So we know, you know, this family has paid their deposit and they selected the blue boy. So mm -hmm. then we know. And, and then there's a field on the spreadsheet as well. If they give us a name, then I know, you know, to plug into the spreadsheet what they named that puppy moving forward. So let's see. Kathy asks, do you have a uh, breed on each heat? Like you're asking like if we breed on each heat. No, we don't. Um, we, we skip uh, heat cycles at least one. Uh, and, and sometimes two, honestly, a lot of times two heat mm -hmm. cycles between, um, uh, you know, times that we let them breed, uh, we we're not running a puppy mill here and these dogs, um, the mamas and, and you know, the, the dad Mac, they're our family pets. We love them. They work here on our farm. They're our livestock guardian dogs, but we love them. Um, and we don't want to wear our girls out. So, um, we, you know, we, we give them breaks in between and um, we keep a close eye to And like last last year, uh, Mabel had her third litter and man, Mabel is an amazing mama. She makes some really, really pretty uh, puppies, but um, her last two pregnancies and uh, 
kind of deliveries were a little little rough. The set, you know, that her second one was it, it just had a little hiccup, but this last one last year um was just rough enough that we were like we don't want to test it for you know test our luck for a fourth one and uh you know it affect mabel in any way so we actually decided to get mabel spayed uh after she recovered from having her puppies so she won't have any more litters so um it's kind of bittersweet because she was an awesome mama mm -hmm. and um she's out you know working in the field with our our livestock and um well, tell the story that she could smell the puppies on you, right? Oh, that Mabel yeah. could. Um, I went down there and I was still wearing the same clothes that I was wearing, like, and the puppies were crawling on me and stuff. And I was just going down there to check on the dogs, and Mabel came running up to me, and her eyes nearly like popped out of her head, and she was like smelling me all over, like, where are the puppies? Oh, she <laughs> loves puppies. She really, really mm -hmm. does. So it's a little bittersweet. Um, but it was, you know, in the best interest of, of her health. Um, and I mean, and it, you know, it's, it is what it is. Uh, you know, we have enough demand, you know, it, it would have been nice, I guess, to have a third female that we could breed and still keep in our breeding program because we have plenty of families that are wanting a puppy. Um, but we're, we're not going to uh, take that as pressure to overbreed our females just to make somebody else happy um, we want to you know the first priority is to keep our um, dogs safe and, and healthy so yep terry said nice system thank you thank you yeah we we just um we want to make sure we're doing it right and and keeping our our dogs ha happy and healthy let's see susan asks how much do the puppies weigh so we haven't weighed them today you haven't weighed them today right mm -hmm. But they were literally born just last night and we can read off their weights when they were born so i can do the smallest and the biggest sure yeah do this so the the smallest puppy was which one um green he weighed 17.5 ounces so 17 and a half ounces was the smallest one and that was the green boy which 17 and a half ounces isn't really very small mm. it's it's still a a, a good sized pup and then our biggest is uh, Mr. Blue, and he's 21 and a half ounces. Yeah, Mr. Blue was 21 and a half ounces. But we also had a 21.4 ounce boy, uh, the, the black collar, and 21. a 21.35 ounce girl in the red collar. So um, Millie had some, some big pups this, this go around. Melissa, or Melissa, <laughs> Michelle, my wife said, Melissa Grace needs some coffee after a long night delivering puppies. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. It really is. <laughs> you want me to make you some coffee after this? <laughs> Take me to Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> we might have to do that. We might have to do that. Yes. Terry said, that's beautiful, Melissa Grace. Well, all the puppies are asleep right now. They, they just nursed. Uh, I think right before the live stream started yeah it looks like one of them is trying to nurse right now but they're all just crashed out <laughs> if you can hear the barking in the background that's there are other dogs barking at something outside the garage but it doesn't seem to bother millie and the puppies <laughs> so admittedly the the first couple weeks of puppy live streams aren't as exciting because the puppies and if you if you don't know puppies are born blind and deaf and they don't they can't walk yet they kind of just like booch around um give it just a couple of weeks you know stay tuned to the channel if you haven't already subscribed uh, and we'll, we're going to be doing the live streams weekly with the puppies and you'll see them grow and develop and they're going to be little furry rambunctious little i don't know rascals rascals <laughs> there you go that's the word <laughs> Uh, yeah, they become little floops, floops very, very quickly. And uh, like I shared earlier, we have one more litter that we're expecting later this coming week uh, from our mama May. She's pregnant too, and um, her due date is just a week behind Millie's. So we've been checking her every every day, uh, a couple times a day uh, this week, uh, checking her temperature, 
to wait for it to drop. Um, if you don't know, that's how you can tell when they're going to go into labor. Um, so we're keeping an eye on that. And, you know, as soon as uh, Millie is getting ready, or Millie, as soon as May is getting ready, <laughs> uh, we will bring her into the garage as well. And we already have her whelping box set up in here. So she's she's good to go. Susan said, thank you for sharing. Have to go now. Thank you for, for uh, watching, Susan. I hope to uh, see you on a future live stream. I think we're going to go live again this coming Tuesday in just a couple of days uh, at our normally scheduled time. We just wanted to jump on here tonight as like an impromptu one just to give you guys uh, a live stream when they're like you know pretty fresh newborn since they were just born last night. Michelle said, Jackson says, I love you, sissy. Love you too, Jackson. Uh, <laughs> here, there you go. Let's see, Juan Pablo is on and said, which litter will have the uh, bigger puppies? You know, it's it's really difficult to say. Um, and, and I don't know. It's, it's really weird. Um, I don't know that their birth weight really determines how big they're going to be either. Because I'll tell you from last year's litters may had the biggest puppies like as far as birth weight right mm -hmm. but may is also our smallest female but mac our, our breeding sire he's the dad of all of them um he's a big boy so you know he has some big boy genes that he passes down and but may's pups were um really big but you know we we follow along with uh we call them our forever families, the uh, people that purchase the puppies from us. And it seems like some of her puppies, you know, now uh, at just about a year old, they're they're big, but they're not like huge. Mm -hmm. Well, Jarvis looks really big. Jimmy's big. Jimmy's big. Yeah. Yeah. Jimmy's big. I guess some of the females don't look that big, but um, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you like um, Mac make some big puppies though so if you're looking for a big great pyrenees um he makes some big ones melissa's getting out our our breeding record book to look some stuff up juan pablo said also love this channel and happy easter oh thank you thank you for the love and support we're trying to get back onto a more regular you know schedule of creating content uh it's just we're in a kind of a difficult season as a family we're dealing with some like family medical stuff um, sorry if we're not super transparent with all of it. Um, yeah, we're, we we uh, appreciate you guys respecting our privacy and some of that. It's, it's just that balance of trying to share with you guys, but not oversharing. You know, there is, you know, some stuff that we're going through that we just rather, you know, go through uh, with a little bit of privacy. So, uh, but we appreciate the love and support and uh, trying to share these puppies with you guys and share some of the small farm lifestyle as well. Marcia said, how long is Millie on maternity leave? So she, she'll she stay like in the whelping box for sure. Like most of the time for like probably the first couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Right. And she's, and she'll be totally content with that. Um, she's going to be recovering and, uh, but we bring her food and water out here for her into the garage. And, you know, we, we stay out here with, them very often like um that's why i always say if people if you're watching this and you're like oh gosh there's i bet they make a ton of money selling puppies if you actually do the math on how much time we spend caring for these dogs and the puppies um and then you calculate how much money we made and then you divide it over how much time we spent and then pay yourself per hour based off of that mm -hmm. It, we get paid way less than minimum wage doing this, <laughs> but I, I'm sure that there's some, uh, you know, backyard breeders that um, will just let their, you know, mama have the puppies and then not even give them any attention or care and don't spend any time on it. And maybe they see it as like a huge profit then, but uh, we're not that type of family. We're not that type of breeder. Uh, we love these dogs and we put a lot of time and care into it. So, uh, but anyway, Millie will be kind of on maternity leave for probably like she, she's not going to be over there uh, with our animals as a livestock guardian dog for like probably like a couple months. 
Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Like probably two months. Um, she won't be with the puppies as often, but we'll let her like over on like the house side is what we call it of our property and uh, just kind of giving some time to recover. Let's see. Me and my sis asked how many puppies missed the announcement. Thank you and God bless. Okay. So Millie had seven puppies last night. Uh, she had four boys and three girls. She kind of, she kind of tricked us though at first because she had one boy and then she had a girl a girl, a girl. So we were like, she's going to have a ton of girls, mm. right? And just one boy. And then she had three more boys in a row. <laughs> so <laughs> the boys made a comeback at the <laughs> end. <laughs> yeah. And we, we had a, um, we kind of, we like to have like a little bet, not a bet, but like. Guess. Yeah. yeah. Like guess how many puppies you think they're going to have. Like among our family, you know, with the kids, we, me and my wife ask all the kids, how many puppies do you think Millie's going to have? And I guessed eight. I guessed nine. Mom guessed seven, so she got it right. Jackson guessed eight. And then I forgot what the other boys guessed, but. Yeah. So I was one away from being right. Of course, my wife was right. She had seven. So. Yeah, she's doing she's doing awesome. All the puppies are very healthy. They're doing great. They're ooching around. Mm. I don't know if you guys can hear them. I had to mute Millie's puppy's camera because we were getting like an echo, but they're just kind of ooching around right now in there. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments. <laughs> my wife said of course i was right of course every <laughs> single time right i knew that was going to happen i knew it <laughs> pjk said glad mom and pups healthy and happy yes yes it, it always gets a little stressful while they're giving birth because you know it's it is a i don't know i don't want to say a risk but you know they they do a pretty good job uh birthing the pups on their own but we're always here to make sure that the the birthing process goes smoothly and that we can intervene if we need to we also always have our vet um you know on call basically um ready if uh things go awry that way um we can get mama the help she needs terry said you all are doing it the right way god bless you for that thank you thank you Honestly, this is something, you know, we, we do because we enjoy it. We, we are animal lovers at heart. Um, you know, we, even our goats and our, our pig and our chickens, and we have other, we have, uh, like cats. our inside dogs, we have an inside cat. Uh, you heard the story about that on the last live stream. If you tune into that one, uh, that was a funny story, but we have a couple feral cats that we feed. I mean, we just, we love animals. So, um, named a squirrel. <laughs> Yeah, one of the kids named a squirrel that kind of comes and goes in the backyard. And yes, <clears throat> me and my sis said makes me remember when Justin was born. So adorable. Yes, they're they're so tiny when they're born, but they get big pretty quick, especially this breed, Great Pyrenees. They they get big, quick, very quick. Mm. Millie's moving around a little bit. So another thing as you're watching, you you see as Millie got up, like the whelping pad is what that's called underneath her is a little dirty. Uh, we, uh, part of our system, we clean that at least once a day. We have extra whelping pads and um, we swap it out for a clean one uh, at least once a day or, you know, basically as needed when they get, um, you know, very soiled. So we make sure to keep the whelping box area clean and sanitary for the pups and for mama too. So that that on the um, on the whelping pad is really just some some of the afterbirth still uh, kind of coming out of uh, Millie because she did just give birth last night. So we'll clean that up later. 
Marsha said, poor Millie is exhausted. Did you say that this is Millie's second litter? This is actually Millie's third litter. Um, but she's, yeah, she's a little exhausted right now, but um, she'll bounce back. She's a really good mama to you. She's super sweet to her pups. Terry asked, how long will mama be sleeping and resting? What do you think, Melissa? Well, usually after the first, uh, I would say like five days to a week, they start being a little active. Yeah, she won't be like this sleepy and tired looking for longer than like a like like tomorrow she'll start shaping up a little bit more and and it'll, it'll progressively get better after that she's just exhausted from a, a long day of laboring and delivering puppies yesterday yeah, yeah um, one of the features on the whelping box um you can't see it in the in the camera view here but uh like i cut a little door in it with uh like a hinge and a latch and uh we'll you know open that up and let mama out uh you know in and out and she'll go out in the yard and play for a while and stuff um as she gets more energy and uh and then really just come back in to feed and then uh it won't be long before you know, really just in a, in a few days where mama's rested and healed enough where she'll just jump over the side of the whelping box to get in and out and She'll, um, you know, jump out of the box to get a break from the puppies and just lay on the garage floor next to it and then jump back in uh, when she's ready to feed them again. And like I said, spend a lot of time just outside like she's used to. But right now she's just getting some rest, you know, a long day of um, having puppies yesterday. Which one's that? Let's see, Donna's tuning in. She said, so glad to see you again online. I'm afraid I may have, or I may be in a similar situation with puppies except unplanned. My dogs are escape artists and my fencing has been falling or failing my attempts to control. Uh, Don, I'm sorry to hear that. Hopefully uh, everything goes well with, um, you know, with the pregnancy with the, and with the puppies. Um, as far as the fence, we have a video on our YouTube channel. You might go check it out. Uh, we had issues with Mac escaping, especially our, our big boy. Um, he's kind of calmed down in, in the past year where he's not even really trying to anymore. But some of that we attribute to, excuse me, um, the, the solution we found to keeping him in the fence was really, um, we ended up adding a, a electrical fence, like an electrical, like a hot wire. Um, and... That was our, our kind of our last straw, but honestly, I wish we would have done that to begin with because we would have saved a lot of money and effort because um, we did all kinds of stuff to try to fortify our fence to keep him in. And he would jump it. He would tear through it. Uh, but really, the best solution was the electrical fence hot wire because it only took him getting shocked uh, like once or twice. And now he absolutely respects the boundaries of the fence he won't dare come within a foot of it or even try to touch it because he is afraid it's going to shock him. And just a little secret, don't tell Mac, it's not even on half the time. We don't even turn the fence on that often anymore. We forget to. Um, so really, it's it, you know if you, if you have an area and um, you know property that you can do an electric fence around, I would suggest doing that as the the solution to keeping your escape artists in. You've got to train them to respect the boundaries of the fence to where they don't even test the boundaries. And that's been um, that's really what's been keeping all of ours in. So go ahead and uh, check out that video if you haven't already. Uh, I, I share some of the supplies that we use to do it as well, and you know, kind of how I put that up. 
Looks like the puppies are waking up to start nursing again. Again, if you guys have any questions, drop them in the, the in the live chat. We'll do our best to answer everybody's questions and stuff. We plan on going live again uh, on Tuesdays, getting back on our regular schedule of Tuesdays at, I believe, at 6.30 p.m. Central Time. Uh, we just wanted to jump on tonight, uh, just kind of as a, a quick impromptu, unscheduled version of our live stream uh to show you guys the puppies very small you know pretty much newborn they were just born last night because in just two days you'd be surprised uh, they're going to start changing so mm. i don't know can you guys hear that can you hear them ooching around i wish i could turn their Tracy said they're loud. Yeah, they, they kind of ooch around. They don't really bark yet. They kind of make a, a, a interesting, unique sound puppies do. PJK asked, how many litters do you average each year and what plans do you have for your property this spring? Um, so we, we have two females that we breed at this point. Um, and I guess kind of we average one litter per year. I think I'm going to have to turn their mic off again because I'm echoing again. Let's see. Um, but yeah, um, I don't know why I can hear it echoing again. But yeah, to, to answer this question, uh, basically, we, we kind of... Um, average one litter per uh, one of, you know, of our females per year. Uh, we try to, um, you know, skip, we, or we definitely skip at least one heat cycle uh, between litters, if not two. And it really depends on um, how they did with their last litter um, on how many heat cycles we will skip and, you know, give them a break as well, or, or how many litters they've had total. Um, so we, we, they definitely will not have more than one litter. E each female will not have more than one litter per year. Um, and we'd like to skip like two heat cycles between. So I would say usually they um, go about a year to like 18 months in between uh, litters to recover. Terry said laughing out loud in Michigan. What did we do that was funny? <laughs> <laughs> Me and my sis said, will you uh, be live streaming again soon, Shucks? You answered while I was writing. And yes, they sound amazing. <laughs> yes, yeah, we'll, we'll be again. We'll be back on again this Tuesday night at 6.30 p.m. Central Time. And uh, we again, we just wanted to jump on real quick tonight. Uh, we're probably going to jump off here in just a couple minutes. Um, we're both pretty tired from all the Easter stuff and uh, staying up late last night having the puppies. Um, but we just want to jump on in and share them with you tonight. Let you see them just one day old. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I think we're going to jump off for tonight. Thank you guys for tuning in. We hope to see you again. Uh, we'll, we'll start, um, going to start
posting some stuff up on our Instagram and on our like TikTok and Facebook page as well. We also went live on Instagram and uh, Facebook earlier today, just kind of trying to test that out. But I think it was not that many people joined on on those. I think it was because it's also Easter during the middle of the day. But um, yeah, uh, stay tuned. Oh, let's see. Forrest just jumped on. Forrest has two of our puppies from last year. He's saying, I'm thinking one or two more years, I'll need another pup. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, Forrest. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep you posted. Uh, definitely keep you in mind for a future pup. But uh, let's see. Marcia said, Melissa, are you sleeping in the barn tonight? Yep. <laughs> She's actually sleeping on the couch that we're sitting on right now. She'll be out here. Uh, with the puppies and with Millie and uh, keeping a close eye on them and hopefully getting some sleep tonight. Hopefully. <laughs> did you get some sleep last night? I did. Yeah. Didn't you say they woke you up like four o'clock in the morning or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy asks, why does Millie do uh, the licking the puppies? Do you want to answer that? <laughs> why does Millie lick the like the puppies so when puppies are younger they can't like go to the bathroom by themselves so she likes them to like help stimulate them and then you know yeah it's kind of gross but <laughs> it is it it's the way life works for dogs and for puppies so yeah they they cannot go to the bathroom on their own um they actually need to be like stimulated in order to urinate or to to go poop um, so the mama will lick them to stimulate that. And then also while doing that, clean it up. Um, in fact, if you watch the live stream long, long enough, you'll end up seeing, you know, a couple of the puppies poop and there'll be a little poop on the, you know, uh, whelping pad and mama will get up and lick it and eat it. And that sounds totally disgusting to us, to humans. It's totally normal and natural for dogs to do that. You can look it up. Yeah, it's it's totally instinctual. Um, <clears throat> dogs will do that instinctually to keep predators away, uh, to try to cut down the, on the smell of you know these weak and vulnerable puppies. Um, so that's one of the reasons why mamas do that, and um, it would be really difficult to try to discourage them from doing that. So um, it's kind of gross to watch, but that's why they do that. Me and my sis said, thank you for sharing these beautiful babies. Oh, you're welcome. It's our it's our pleasure and our honor to do it. Terry said, here's a freebie merch idea. Ooching out loud t-shirts mm -hmm. and mugs, etc. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I might have to design something like that. Hey, by the way, merch, it looks you know backwards on the camera, but uh, we've got Willow Ridge Acres hats available. The, the cool like patch hat. If you look on the website, uh, you can see them there, willowridgeacres.com. We have a special right now, free shipping. There's a promo code for it on the website. Go ahead and check that out if you would love to uh, support the small farm and channel that you like to watch. Tracy said, thanks for this Easter blessing. You're welcome. You're welcome. God bless. Sue, Sue B3 says, she looks so peaceful with her, her beautiful puppies. I'm sure she's tired too. Yes. Yes, she'll be more active come Tuesday, I guarantee. She's not going to be this exhausted. She's just, she's tired. She had, you know, seven babies just yesterday. So she needs just a little bit of rest. So with that, we're going to jump off here tonight. We'll see you guys again uh, on our social media. Uh, if not there, we'll see you again right here, 6.30 p.m. for another uh, live stream, uh, puppy live stream on our YouTube channel on Tuesday. See you then.